Hello and welcome. This is going to be a little quick video to explain how to produce a graph on Excel. A graph that is in the format ready for a publication. Obviously with journal publications it's very expensive to do them in colour. So the development of this graph is going to show you how to do it in black and white and in the second part we'll add uh, error bars as well. So to start with let's just have a look at the very simple data that I've set up and I think it's important that when you are building graphs for the first time is to take your complex data and put it into a simple style. Here we have month, average and standard deviation. So we're just going to pretend with this data. Let's just say this is the you know, average number of phone calls you get and the standard deviation for each month of the year. Now let's instead of numbers actually have months here. So let's put January, February, March, April, May and June. So then we have what we would like. And the first thing to do is to remember that we would like a, a bar graph here. So what I do is I highlight the average data and then click to select the type of graph. And we want a simple column graph, which is the most common sort of graph we might use in uh, journal publications. I always uh, just quickly hit finish so I can have a quick look at what the graph looks like. Now these are the pre-formatted uh, features for Excel. Do you notice the background is grey and the bars are blue and it has this um, legend on the side. The first thing we want to understand with a journal article is that in black and white greys and blues come out very similar. So you want to remove this and make for good contrast. The second thing to notice is to notice along the bottom that the uh, months are the numbers here, just each row in your data set, row 1 being 10, row 2 being 12 and so on down the list. And you actually want this to include the months as in January through to June. So we will organise all of these. The first simple thing to do in a graph like this is you don't want a legend. So if you click on the legend and then delete, hit the delete key, that will disappear. The second thing you want to do is you want to make the background white. So if you double click on the background area, you can turn the background to white. At the same time here, what I normally do is turn off the border as well. And let's just have a look at what that looks like now. There you are click away from the graph so you take the highlight bar off and you can see your graph is looking better all the time. For a graph like this we also want these bars to be full black colour. So double click on them, Oops, that was a single click which highlights them, but if you double click you can turn them to black like this and while you're here if you notice the gap between the bars is bigger than the bars themselves and that's the preset option for Excel but you might like to shrink that gap to save space and to do that you click on options here and you change the gap spacing. I set the gap for something like 40 usually and there we go. So now you can see you've got a nice uh, print ready graph except for a few things. Firstly it's sort of the wrong proportions. Remember in a journal they usually come in single column, two column or three column. So I usually with a graph of this sort of style would aim to make it a single column graph which means the proportions would be much more like so. And you can now see the graph in more what it would look like in a journal article. There's a few things on this that we still need to fix. Let's remember we also want the lower area here to have these months in there, not numbers. So what you need to do to do that is you need to highlight the graph. Do you 
notice. You click once on the graph area and you get these little dark spots that means it's highlighted. And then you go back to the chart wizard at the top here. Click on the chart wizard. If you go next here, you get to this here. And this shows you how the data is being collected. Notice so far it shows you that the data range, and you can see the data range has got this little bar, this flashing bars around it to tell you that. If you go into series here, and down here, you can see the X category labels. So you click in the, the square there, and then you highlight the months with that flashing boundary like that. And if you can see at the top here, just you might be able to see that in the preview, you can see that it's now got the months. And just to make sure we can see that, if we just click finish now, there you go, you can see the months have turned up here. Pretty small font, you can't really see them, but we'll come to that in a minute. So this is really important because what this means is let's just say you're going to change this. Let's say you want to put the full name. You notice I've, I've retyped the full name but at the same time it's changed on the graph. Let's just put this back to single name for now. Short name there. Now, the next thing is to notice is this is proportionally too small. When that would be printed on a, uh, on a um, paper, you wouldn't be able to read it. So if you double click on it, up will come the formatting and you can go to font and at the moment the font size is 5.2 so I'd go for something like 11 there we are and you can now see that at the same time I do the vertical axis too this is a little bit small so double click on it immediately click on the font pick 11 and you've got the font size right now now do you notice how it's sort of strung it out this way. I don't like that look and most people don't read like that so I just change the size a wee bit to get it back to uh, how it should be. So you now have a nice x-axis scale, a nice y-axis scale except if you look at the y-axis scale the lowest number in our list is about 9 and the highest is 17 whereas Excel has made the y-axis 0 to 20. You can actually set that. If you go back again and double click on the axis like that, if you go to scale, in here you can set the lower to the high. So for example, I'm going to start at 8 and run through to 20 and I'm going to have the major tick interval, so in other words the gap between these, I'm going to make it, well nothing goes nicely between 8 and 20, so why don't we make this, we can't make it 16 because the 17 would be beyond the edge of the graph, so we'll leave it at 20 and we'll make this 4, which is the closest we can, and then we don't worry about all the rest of this, the presets are good. So go OK, go OK, and you can now see the graph has, the scale is now something that gives you an obvious outcome to your study data. So you've now completed a simple graph for a, a journal publication. There's one thing though, this is the raw data, but it doesn't have the standard deviations. So let's add the standard deviations now. Again, if you double click on the bar, you can see the format comes up. And then you can look for the Y error bar option at the top of this list here. And you can now, and I don't use the presets because I find them complicated, doesn't work well. So I always like bars that are both directions most journals do them in both directions and I click on custom and I want one standard deviation above the line so I go like that and I want one standard deviation below the line so I go like that and that way I've got the standard deviations now fixed 
So I go OK, and there we go. Error bars are done. Notice that if an error bar is in a completely densely black coloured bar, you don't see the error bar. So we can change that. And how we do that is if we just double click on the bar again. Oops, I only clicked once there, see I've picked up just one bar. In that case, just go to another one and just double click, Oop, get one again. Just click away from the bar and then go back to the bar and double click on it. And you can now see we can change the fill. So let's go to fill effects. I always use patterns and the first pattern to choose is always cross hatching. That looks pretty good. So let's just choose that for now. And you can see the sample of it here. And we go OK and there we go. Now if you notice now the error bars look very thin compared to the other um, lines on the graph. So let's make those error bars a wee bit thicker. Go up to the error bar, double click on it, and now you can choose the line weight. So I always go up a wee bit in line weight, that's a bit too high. I'll go to there, press OK, and you can now see you've got the error bars with decent lines. Similarly, the lines around the edge of the bars is not really thick, so I would double click on the bars, increase the weight of these lines. There we are. That doesn't look very good. So if you don't like something, you can always use the Edit Undo, like that, and that will get you back to where you were. So our graph is almost finished. There's a couple more things we're missing. We're missing the uh, labels for each axis. So how do we do that? What we do is we click on the graph again, we go back to the wizard, we go to Next, which gives us this. We go to Next, and remember in, in here is where we set those uh, labels for the axis, but we don't want that this time. We want to go Next again, and this is where you can set it. So this, for example, the x-axis, we can make it Month in 2012, if we wanted to do that and the y-axis, I've forgotten what we pretended we were doing, let's say um, number of emails, just as a random sort of header. Just click finish and they will appear on your graph and there they are there. Now for me what happens is you end up with a lot of white space around the graph and journals don't like that, that's a waste of money. So you can click once on it and hold your finger down and then slide the header down much closer to the boundary, like that. And you can pick this one up and do the same, slide it over towards the boundary, like that. And then if you click once in the area of the graph, you'll get these edge edges, and then you can resize it, resize your graph to be close to it. There we are. And there is the graph what I would call ready for um, placement in the journal article. Now that actually raises a, a little tip for the end of this story and that tip is that uh, when you go to um, insert this on a Word document there are a number of ways you can do it and um, what I would recommend what I would recommend is being a little bit careful with how you insert graphs into papers. If you just click on the graph, copy it, then you go to then you go to your Word document. If you just go paste We'll just do it now. If you just go to straight simple paste like this, what happens is the graph is actually remains connected to the Excel file below. 
So if you move them around or uh, mess around with it or save it in a different place, the connection is lost. It also makes the Word document very large because it keeps all the data and all the connection and everything around it. So I would not recommend doing that. So let's just delete that off for now. Let's just go backspace, delete. The way I do it is to, same as before, click on the graph, edit copy from Excel. Then you go to your Word document and then you go edit paste special. And paste special gives you some options and the option you choose is one of the picture ones. In this case it's given you picture enhanced meta, that's okay. Otherwise you could use picture GIF file, probably not picture JPEG because the resolution goes poor. But just choose a picture and then you paste that in and now you have this unlinked to the data but as a picture within your Word file. And you can then resize it if you want to make your graph bigger on the page. There's a few things here that I've immediately noticed. You notice how the graph itself has a boundary around it? Journals don't like that. No journal publishes with a boundary. So while we're here, we've got a few minutes to spare, let's just fix that up. We go back to Excel and you can see, oh yes, look at that. See it's got that little edge boundary on it. We don't want that. So all we do is just go right up next to the boundary, double click on it, and you can see here, border, you want none. Area you leave automatic because that will give you a white background to it, unless you're doing this on coloured paper, which is, you know never happens in a journal, but that's fine. Go like that. And you notice now the border has disappeared. Click on the graph again. Go edit copy. Go back to your Word document. Let's just delete that one off. Backspace. Edit, paste special. Paste it as a picture. OK. And there you go. You've now got it. We'll just resize it so we can have a look at it as a full page event. You've now got your graph without the boundary around it and in a style that's reasonably good for publication. Notice that the month tag is a wee bit close to the months and these are a wee bit far away from here. You can just keep fiddling and, and correct it as you go. But this is a classic graph style that is used for uh, journal articles. Thank you.